what's up y'all happy friday it is friday we made it to a new week i am for one i for one am very glad that it's friday i don't know how it became friday because i feel like i was just here with y'all um last week shout out to last week's bible study if you were able to attend thank you so much for being there and if you weren't uh, I definitely encourage you to check it out on our YouTube channel at Big Idea Food. We have, um, uh, we are doing Bible studies every single week for Big Idea Food based on, if you don't know what Big Idea Food is, that is my weekly devotional for entrepreneurs, side hustlers, and dreamers. There are 52 devotions inside of this book and the devotions are really great, short, sweet, to the point, and what we are doing is we are diving deeper into each of the devotions with uh, more scripture around the points and premises behind the devotionals so that we can just spend some time eating in God's word. That's really what it is. We're really using the devotionals as prompts to um, continue to consume the word of God and feed our spirits so that we can fuel ourselves in the work that God has called us to do, which it's so necessary to do. We can't do that work without the fuel that we need to do what God called us to do, which is his word. Uh, and that is why Big Idea Food exists. If you didn't know, we are here specifically to support entrepreneurs and creatives in fueling the work that God has commissioned you on. And uh, we do that by feeding you. Uh, and the word of God is the food in Big Idea Food. So anyway... Hope you are, if you want to hear more background on these Bible studies and why we're doing them, definitely check out the first episode that is on the Big Idea Food YouTube channel. You can get to that inside the link in either bio, wherever you're watching this, uh, and you can check that out, um, the first episode on there, and that'll give you a little bit more background about where this came from and why I'm doing it. So anyway, I want to go ahead and get right into today's message. Uh, the way that we will do these each week is we will start with a prayer and then we will do a, um, we'll, we'll do three, two or three points inside of the Bible study and we'll close it out. And so my goal is to make this around 20 minutes ish. We'll see what God says. Hey, bestie. <laughs> we'll see what, uh, what the Lord says. And if we can actually, if we end up going a little longer, we just go longer, but that's my goal is to make these little bite sized nuggets that you can listen to real quick get a little good word and then go on about your day so hopefully you guys are having a great friday we are going to pray and we're going to get right into the message um so let us pray <clears throat> father thank you so much again for another friday um another day lord to be alive um that we have breath in our lungs Lord, we do not take that for granted. We thank you, Lord, for the uh, being in our right state of mind and just the ability and the health that you have blessed us with in this current moment. Father, we praise you. And right now, we just remember and take a minute to acknowledge your presence that is with us always. I thank you that you are here with us now. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember that in each step of our lives, in each area of our lives, all of the areas, you care about each and every one have support for each and every area of our lives and as we invite you into those areas especially into our business into our families into our finances whatever it is um, you are there to provide support you are there to provide wisdom and direction and all of those things Lord. so please remind us and um, help us to take time to remember that in each moment that we're walking through this life and to remember that we're not alone uh, but we have you and I thank you Lord that I am not alone in this life but you are here with me now um, and you have something to share with the people. And so I just pray that you would help me to be sensitive to your spirit in this time, Lord. I pray that you would speak through me, Lord. Your word says, um, we open wide our mouth and you will fill it. So that is what I'm here to do. Um, so just have your way in this study. I pray, Lord, that you would, um, just give us some good word today. <laughs> speak to us and give us something that we need, um, that is going to bless us in the work that you have called us to do, Father. Um, and just let your will be done with everything that is spoken today, with every question that is asked, so that ultimately you get the glory and that we all get the direction we need to move forward in the things that you've given us to do. We love you so much, and we ask for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome, everybody. We just finished up the prayer. 
Um, if you're just joining us, I am so happy to have you here. Happy Friday! And we are going to get right into the word. So this week, we are on week number two of Big Idea Food, which is called God Has Unlimited Power. Okay, say that with me. Uh, God has unlimited power. That is a mantra that I used to have before I moved. I had that thing. Ta- I need to retape it on my wall. But I used to have it taped up on my wall uh, to remind myself that God has unlimited power, um, which I need that reminder all the time when I get into spaces where things are seeming hopeless or it seems like I there is some scarcity present or whatever the case. It's like, oh, wait, God can do anything like needing that reminder uh we run into stuff all the time where we need that reminder so when i wrote the original message around this um it shared a uh an example of the way that god thinks versus the way that we think hey everybody hey melody hey davisha hey candace um it talked about sort of um this perspective that god has right because we can have a mantra all day about god has unlimited power but do we really know it? Do we really believe it? Uh, and many times, obviously, we don't have the same perspective that God has. And so the devotional talks about, again, get the book if you haven't gotten it yet. So you have even more background to what these Bible studies are about. Um, even though you don't need it to enjoy the Bible study, but I encourage you to get the book. Um, but God's perspective is so much greater and so much more expansive than ours, right? And the example that was shared in the devotional is that there's a guy who you know he did some favor for this Arabian sheik okay this I don't know I don't know if this is a parable or what but it's a story I heard a pastor share so a guy did a favor a favor for this Arabian sheik right and the sheik was like I want to return the favor for you like I really appreciate you did this to me what can I get I want to give you a gift what can I give to you uh, and the guy is like um I mean I don't know you can give me some golf clubs or something a golf club and so the sheep, sheep was like, okay, bet. So I don't know, a week or month goes by and the dude, uh, the sheep connects with the guy. And he's like, hey, let me take you to your golf club. And the guy's like, I'm sorry, what? And turns out the Arabian sheep, what he heard when the guy said that was a full golf club, like a resort, y'all. I just passed by one on the way in today and looked at it. And that thing was looking good and beautiful and big and rich, <laughs> right? And so... While the guy was thinking small, right? He was thinking about a golf club, literally something he could hold in his hand, uh, something he could control. Uh, The sheik heard a whole entire golf club with greens and golf carts and all of the above, right? And the, you know, the pastor shared that as an example of the difference between the way that we think and what we can see and, and what God can see. And so, hey Derek. So when we think about how huge God's perspective is, how much greater God's perspective is than ours, um, and how much greater his reach and his capacity is than ours, right? Uh, Because the guy, you know, he may have been able to afford a pair of golf clubs, right? But he probably couldn't afford a whole golf club, but the sheik could. So, (laughs) you know, not only is God's perspective so much bigger and wider than ours and his capacity to provide for us so much greater than how we could even think or fathom. Um, But his ability to do things for us is huge, right? And because of that, I believe we do ourselves a disservice and we don't, you know, we don't honor him at the level of honor that he really deserves when we're thinking so small. Uh, And when we don't test the limits of what he can do because they're truly just like this, Um, message says he has unlimited power he has unlimited power there is nothing outside of the reach of God and that means and that's unlimited power in every area of our lives right I don't care what you are going through I don't care if it's health I don't care if it's money family stuff relationships he has unlimited power and if we could just conceive of that We could be experiencing so much more um, provision and abundance in our lives. And so today's Bible study is really, I wanted to provide you some scriptures and some some points that you can meditate on that can start to expand your mindset around God's power. And 
tell you the truth, I really need this word today because I have been definitely, you know, walking through, you know, a new season where I, you know, I have transitioned into marriage, marriage, and um, I'm a bonus mom now and all these things. And I am navigating all of the new things associated with that from, you know, relationally to finances to everything in between and definitely have felt literally, you know how you just be going through stuff definitely felt some pressure this last week and I need this message so I'm excited to dive into it with you and talk about some of these things to just help uh, help expand my mind and hopefully you guys get some mind expansion as well as we walk through these um, these points so my notes are over here if you see me looking over here on the screen so if you're taking notes again this is week two God has unlimited power for week one if you haven't seen it yet hey Leslie yes you in this thing um, if you haven't, uh, if this is your first week joining us, you can check out the uh, week one that happened last week on the Big Idea Food YouTube channel. It's just youtube.com slash big idea food, uh, or you can get to the link inside of my bio. Um, but week two is God has unlimited power, and that is what we're meditating on in this time. So if you are taking notes, uh, mental or writing them down, the first point that I want to talk about is I can ask largely for whatever I need, Okay. I can ask largely for whatever I need. And largely, y'all, that's in all caps in my notes, okay? <laughs> all caps. I can ask largely for what I, for whatever I need, okay? And I got a bunch of scriptures around this, so just get ready to just write down some scripture references, y'all, because there are so many here. So the first scripture reference I want to share is Mark 9, 23 through 24. And this is out of the Passion Translation. Um, shout out to the Passion Translation for any of y'all lovers. Leslie, I know you love some, some uh, TPT. So um, Mark 9, verse 23 through 24. And it says, Jesus said to him, what do you mean if? If you were able to believe, all things are possible to the believer. When he heard this, the boy's father cried out with tears saying, I do believe, Lord, help my little faith. Y'all. And so for those of you who may be familiar with, um, hey, Stephanie, hi, love, it's so good to see you. Um, for those of you who may be familiar with this passage of scripture, this is a passage where there is a man whose son is experiencing a, I think, an, a, a, a demon, a demon possession of some sort. And um, he's like, Jesus, I need help. Your disciples ain't doing it. You know what I'm saying? Help me out. And uh, and he basically said to Jesus, like, if you can do something, please. And Jesus was like, he felt a way, like, <laughs> if, I'm sorry, <laughs> if I could do something. And I love, I love the Passion Translation because it really points out that if part of what Jesus said. Because he was like, what do you mean if? And I feel like that speaks so well to what I was talking about earlier when we don't fully honor God's unlimited capacity with our little prayers and our little perspectives and and not to say your little prayers are insignificant or um, don't matter but there is something I, I believe God feels like you know it might be a little love language for God when we come to him asking for big God-sized things you know what I'm saying because like I'm a whole God out here ask me for a God thing you know like if I can do that, like that's small potatoes to me, fam. Like, of course I can do that. Um, and so I love how Jesus was like, if, and he really put it back on the man. Like, if you can believe, <laughs> first of all, because I can do anything. So really, if anything about to sh take uh, shake off in this moment, it's because you can believe. It's because you, anything can happen to the man who believes or the woman who believes. And, uh, it's just like, if we could just get our faith up, y'all, if we could just get our, our belief up, there is power in our ability to believe and we have such a great capacity for faith. Um, right, prayer is God's love language. Yes, prayer is his love language. Asking big prayers, I believe, makes him feel extra loved and special, right? But if we could just get our faith up, there is so, there is like, everything to us is limited if we just get our faith up and and that's why i'm doing these bible studies because when we spend time with the word of god reading the word of god right we are enlarging our faith we are faith comes by the word and 
faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God or in the Greek it says hearing by the word of Christ the more we hear about Jesus who is the word who is the scripture um, the more that our faith is built up and so if you are unable to ask largely at this stage in your life right it is because your faith needs to grow and the way that we do that is by meditating in the word of God um, period hey Tracy and so um, again there is nothing impossible to us and we can ask so largely <laughs> we can ask for the moon if we want if we have the faith to believe for it right because Jesus can do it all and it's just us that need to enlarge our faith so I think y'all get that point let me know if, in the chat if you do um, hey Shaquinta so uh, the next scripture reference so that first one was Mark 9 23 through 23 through 24 this next one is Mark 11, verse 22 through 25. And this is in the New International Version, y'all. Okay, Mark 11, verse 22 through 25. And we're still talking about the point, I can ask largely for whatever I need. Okay, that is the point that we're on, and we're just walking through some scriptures around that point. And so the second point here is, um, or the this continuing on the thought of I can ask largely for whatever I need. When we get into Mark 11 verses 20 through 25 it says have faith in God Jesus answered truly I tell you if anyone says to this mountain go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart but believes that what they say will happen it will be done for them therefore I tell you whatever you ask for in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours y'all the, the things the word of God says we can have when you sit here and really like think about it there <laughs> Like, there is, there is nothing we can't ask God for. You know what I'm saying? There is nothing. There is no limit. Um, outside of, obviously, things that would be harmful to ourselves or others, right? But, like, there is just nothing that is outside of the scope of God if we can just believe for it. And Jesus is telling us again, right? I love how both of these scriptures have been Jesus talking because Jesus came to represent the possibilities available to us when we believe God. And so Jesus is like, again, all you got to do is believe. You can tell a whole mountain to go and jump into the sea. And if you believe that thing, that thing going to jump up and get into the sea. Right? And we just talked about how do we get there? How do we get our faith to that level? We do what we're doing right now. Right? Shout out to you who are listening and, and coming to these Bible studies because it's by bathing yourself in the word continuously and continuously. Hi, Michelle that you are enlarging your capacity to believe you are enlarging your faith right now as you are listening to the word of god every time you turn on a sermon every time you spend some time in the bible you are enlarging your capacity to believe and y'all we life got life got too much going on for us not to have a strong faith okay i don't know about y'all but life be trying to life a whole lot and the more that we can enlarge our faith the more that we can have some uh, have some dominion over the stuff happening to us, the more that we can make a difference, um, the more that we can positively shift things going on in our favor, right? We are suffering needlessly a lot of times because of our lack of faith, right? The word of God says, uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge, um, right? Like all we need is to realize how impactful our faith is and we won't be perishing. And perishing looks like struggle. It looks like, you know, sickness and disease. It looks like all the things that God never intended for us to experience. But when we have faith, when we have knowledge of the power of that faith, we do the opposite of perish, which is live <laughs> and live good. Okay. <laughs> live real good and that is God's intention for us that is his will for us and for our lives to live real real good right Jesus came John 10 10 Jesus came that you may have life and life more abundantly he didn't come for you to be perishing out here that is not what he came died and resurrected for at all and we when we settle for that level of life again we're doing ourselves a disservice and we are not honoring the capacity of the God that we say that we believe in okay yes and wholesome lives okay we just abundant and wholesome amen <laughs> yes knowledge of god and his promises is the light of our life it is the light of our life leslie it is the air that we breathe oh my gosh like it is the the gas <laughs> that fuels our ability to live this life and live it well 
the more that we just understand God, we can do anything. And through that understanding, as we meditate in his word, that faith, honey, it just voluptuates. Is voluptuate a word? I made it a word just now. Okay. <laughs> and the, more, the bigger our faith is, the more we can tell these mountains to go. I don't know what mountains you got in your life right now, but I'm telling you, and you don't, it don't matter what you're studying, right? Because studying the word is studying Jesus. Okay. So you can be reading about the donkey talking or the rocks crying, whatever you read in the word, whatever you just flip open your Bible to and just take a little t second to ingest that thing. You are literally think you are giving your spirit the nutrients that it needs to function because it's all in you. The power to believe and receive from God is all baked into your spirit, right? Those of us who are born again, and if you have not received Christ, I encourage you on this good day to receive him. He is not far, okay? We can talk about that. Hit DM me and we can talk about it. Um, but yeah, you're giving your spirit the nutrients that it needs to function how God created it to function. And he created it to move mountains. That's the level of power that lives inside of you because God lives inside of you. He put, he put himself. <laughs> Y'all, I'm telling you, the more you just sit and think about like God lives inside of me. Why am I struggling with anything at all? It, does, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. Okay. Yes. Making up words, piecing out the mountains. <laughs> Deuces. Like get up out my life. You don't belong here. Um, so yes. Amen. Um, have faith in God. Mark 11, 22 through 25. Um, that whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And you know what? I am going to mention this other part of the scripture because it's important to speak to this, especially when we're talking about asking God. Uh, we can ask largely for whatever we need, which is the point we're on. I can ask largely for whatever I need. Um, the second part of this scripture passage says, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Um, and I will mention that um, only because if prayer and, and believing is the currency of making things happen, um, unforgiveness is like pouring sugar in the tank of that, right? <laughs> If we are in a space of unforgiveness, like we just, we stop our prayers and we stop our ability to pray. But the good news is, um, the more that you, again, the answer is always going back to the word. The more that you spend time in the word, the more that you spend time with Jesus in his word, listening to sermons, listening to Bible studies like this, the more that that capacity to forgive is going to continue to release itself within you. The more that your heart is going to enlarge to be able to forgive. Um, I encourage you, you know, um, as we as we know that forgiveness is necessary for our prayers to, to work <laughs> with God, um, I encourage you to lean on him, right? Um, lean on Christ, okay? The scripture, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I don't know how many times that I have used that scripture and made it a declaration about I can forgive this person through Christ which strengthens me. <laughs> Lord, I forgive this person through Christ which strengthens me. Because sometimes you don't feel that forgiveness, right? But you want to forgive. You desire to, you know, you don't want it to live there and be clogging up things, right? But it's there. So what you going to do with it, right? You need the power of God to forgive. And the power of God to forgive comes from, again, sitting and meditating in his word, right? Spending time with love himself, who is rich in mercy, <laughs> who is rich in forgiveness, right? The more time you spend with him, the more capacity you will be able to forgive. Okay, so it, it still goes back to spending time in the word of God. It always goes back to that and leaning on the power of the word of God to help you in those in those places in your life and those relationships in your life that forgiveness is not coming as easily. <laughs> Prayerfully, it's coming easily in as many parts of your life as possible. But for those hard struggle parts, ooh, honey. We, we are depending on the word of God. We're depending on Christ. He is our support for everything. He's even your support to do the, the things that he's asking you to do, like forgive. You can't forgive without him, just like you can't ask largely <laughs> without him, right? So we need him for everything. And again, it goes back to spending time in his word. So amen, we gonna forgive too. So we can we can ask for the big prayers, okay? We're not letting anything get in the way of the asking of the largely. So final scripture with this point comes from Luke 11, 
Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 8. Luke 11, 5 through 8. And this is a complete Jewish Bible translation. Um, I love this scripture, y'all. So I'm going to read this. It's kind of a long passage. So it says, he also said to them, this is Jesus talking. He's giving us a parable. Suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him in the middle of the night and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine who's been traveling has just arrived at my house and I have nothing for him to eat. All right, my friend here, I ain't got no food in the crib. Now, the one inside may answer, yo, don't bother me. The door shut. My children, we all in the bed. Like, okay, go and figure out your problem. But we over here, we good over here because we sleep. All right. He said, I can't get up and give you anything. And Jesus said, but I tell you, even if he won't get up because the man is his friend, yet because of the man's chutzpah, y'all, we got the complete Jewish Bible translation. So it uses the word chutzpah here. And so the, the de- because of the man's chutzpah, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. And I love the term chutzpah here because chutzpah means extreme self-confidence. Um, extreme self-confidence. That's what chutzpah means. So because of because of the man who is asking, because of the extreme self-confidence of the man who is asking, uh, the friend is going to get up and give him whatever he needs, right? Not even because he's his friend. Not even because we cool. But he's going to do it because this man had the, the, well, he had the, he had the extreme self-confidence. I just had to make sure we, we kept it. Well, you know, I want to say he had the balls to come ask. So I'm sorry, y'all. Hopefully that's not, <laughs> that's not, that's not a bad thing to say, but. You know, he came like, no, I believe you got this for me. And I'm asking you, you're, you're my friend and I believe you can do this for me. Um, and I, I believe that Jesus is speaking about, again, why is he telling us this parable? Why? He's talking about prayer. And he's talking about the attitude of prayer that God wants us to come to him with. And, and he's saying like here, like, yeah, God is your father. And he gonna he gonna give to you because he love you, right? But even if he even if he didn't give to you because of that, because he your daddy, if you come to him with some self confidence, with some hoodspur, <laughs> he gonna he he ain't got no choice but to be like, you know what? You are too confident out here. You believe in me. Have you ever had somebody like come to you with with faith in you? Like think about it. Have you ever had somebody that has just so much faith in your character? and your integrity and your track record with them that they stand on that thing and they're like i mean i know who you are okay so you i'm coming to you because of who you are to me i know you're gonna get this to me because i know you and doesn't that do something to you you be feeling away like you trust me (laughs) you believe in me like oh my god you really i must i must have integrity i must have character like (laughs) It's, it feels good to be trusted. It feels good when people put their, like, they put their weight on you. Um, they, they put their confidence in your capacity and your character toward them. Yeah, Leslie, I'm, th- I'm thinking about you. Heck yeah. Um, y'all, Leslie, worth the work. XO is my girl. And we just be doing life out here together, okay? And just confidence in each other. And it just feels so good to be believed in, right? And I and saw, so, you know, I imagine not knowing not being able to fathom how god feels but we did he did create us in his image and after his his likeness so if it feels good to me for someone to have confidence in me and my character imagine how it feels to god when we go to him with that extreme confidence in who he is and his capacity and his character and his love for us y'all he can't help but you i just got to bless you i can't even help but bless you because you just you just believe so good you <laughs> You just believe so good and it just make me feel good when you're believing okay i feel the lord i feel the holy spirit i feel the presence of god um so he must enjoy this message amen thank you lord um yeah have some chutzpah about yourself all right this point is i can ask largely and we ask that big to god he he just he just gonna give it to you you know what i'm saying he gonna give it to you because why wouldn't he you believe me you got faith you done been forgiving folk too you out here just trying to you know you just trying to make me give to you baby now what you want because because you 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 you're believing in me real good right now okay 
Um, so amen. Ask largely. We can ask largely. Um, amen. Yes. Thank you. Hey, Candice. <laughs> I am so glad you guys are here. Yes. God for this makes you feel like you're a superhero. Yes. Yes. And I believe it makes God feel like he's a superhero. God wants to feel like a superhero. Okay. Because he is. That was my point. I was in Bible study on my personal Bible study. And that was one of my scriptures. Um, he literally, Jesus literally, I'm sorry. I was just watching Guardians of the Galaxy. This is a whole aside. I was just watching Gar Guardians of the Galaxy number two. And the dude is like, sorry, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. But if you ain't seen it at this point, you don't care. But dude, you know, the main character ends up being a god in the movie. Because his dad is like the god of the movie. And I was just like, dang, Jesus, like, you literally are, you was literally a whole human out here walking, and God is your father, and, like, you was, you was a legit superhero, <laughs> like, a real one, like, the only one, um, except for us, right, because we are um, the same works that he does, and greater works will we do, so, anyway, that's neither here nor there, but we praise God for um, feeling like a superhero and helping God feel like a superhero by asking him largely with chutzpah. Okay, chutzpah is the vocabulary word of the day. It means extreme self-confidence. That is the term that um, the complete Jewish Bible, which is a translation done by Jewish Christians, um, Jewish messianic believers, um, and they are using the, the Jewish terms that would have been used in the Greek or spoken in the Greek at that time. And so they use the term chutzpah there. And that means extreme self-confidence. So I just love that. Okay. It's just so good. Hey, y'all. Welcome, welcome. Um, if you are just joining, we are talking about week two of Big Idea Food. We're diving deep into week two. Talking about God having unlimited power. Okay. And so we are, um, we have just gotten through our first point of the day. We only got two points today, but lots of scriptures. Um, our first point was I can ask largely for whatever I need. Okay. I can ask largely for whatever I need. Um, literally just talked to a design company with that name. Oh, dope. That's a dope name. Okay. So I, I want to see their designs. They must have some very bold and self-confident designs. Okay. Have to check them out. Um, but moving on to point number two, if you're taking notes, if you're taking notes, this is a longer point. Um, point number two is I have no lack because I am always with the one who has unlimited supply. Okay. Yeah, girl, pull your book out. Pull your book out, baby. Um, number, the point number two is I have no lack because I am always with the one who has unlimited supply. Okay. Let's talk about this because this the whole reason right we're talking about asking largely um and we we can ask largely and this point is talking about we have no lack right um and it's really talking about lack is never true for us right lack is a perception uh we have no lack because we are always with the one who has unlimited supply so if you got Walmart attached to your hip, you're never without whatever Walmart got. You know what I'm saying? Amazon. Let's use Amazon. <laughs> right? We get everything from Amazon. What? Who got an Amazon package this week? Put it in the chat. Let me know. Be honest. Okay? If you got Amazon attached to your hip, you never are missing anything. You never have any lag because Amazon is right there. Right? And, and that is the truth of our reality as well, right? God is always with us. And God has unlimited capacity and unlimited supply. His supply is greater than Amazon's supply. <laughs> he got supply that's intangible, okay? Amazon can send you some stuff in the mail, right? But God can send you some peace and stuff in the mail, okay? <laughs> he can send you some reconciliation, all right? He can send you, listen, all the things, right? Unlimited supply is what God is working with. And so we have, there is really, the truth is always that even if what you are, what is presently showing itself in your life appears to be lack, the truth of the matter is you have no lack, right? And so we're going to talk about that. Let's get into it. So the first scripture that we are going to talk about is Psalms 23 and 1. All right, Psalms 23 and 1. 
And this is the Holman Christian Standard Bible version. And it reads, you guys are very familiar, it's a very familiar packet, passage of scripture. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I lack. All right? The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I lack. And that's what, everything that I just said is literally what uh, David is saying and realizing. He might as well have said, like, the Lord is my Amazon. <laughs> I have no lack. Like, I'm with the, sh I'm a sheep out here in these streets. My shepherd got it, okay? The Lord, and the, and you know, the word, the Lord, right, is a representation of God's name, right? Because our Jewish brethren didn't say the name of God or write the name of God, um, or they didn't speak the name of God because they thought it was just, too, it's so holy, we don't speak the name of God. But there, the Lord is, is referring to God's name, Yahweh, right? Yahweh is my shepherd. Do you know who Yahweh is? <laughs> Do you know, like, he the Lord, Lord, okay? He the God, God. <laughs> he is my shepherd. So I have, he said, there is nothing I lack. Literally nothing I lack. All this stuff that is in this earth came from a breath of God, okay? Every Amazon package you ever got came because God put all of this in motion, right? So there is nothing that we lack because we have God. We have the Lord. We have Yahweh as our shepherd, amen? So again, I have no lack. Lack is a perception. Lack is a lie. Shout out to my mastermind group where that nugget came out. Lack is a lie. <laughs> I'm sorry. But who lied to you and said that you was missing anything? No. How can you lack when the Lord is your shepherd? Right? And it goes back to what we talked about earlier. If you're just getting in, make sure you check out the big, the our YouTube channel. I'll be posting the replay on there. Um, we just talked about how do we build up our faith to be able to ask for the things that we perceive that we lack. And it is by spending time in the word of God we spending time in the word listening to sermons listening to the bible studies like this that's how we build up our faith to be able to ask god for the things that we need right or that we lack in quotations um and because if we have faith for it we can receive it from him there's no lack that's the truth the truth i don't care what you are experiencing right now the truth is there is no lack if you are experiencing lack you are only a a prayer away from that thing being manifested in your life okay you are faith and prayer away from that all right it is only it only needs to be transferred to you and the currency for that transference is your faith and you get faith right if, if faith is the currency <laughs> of the kingdom how do we make that bread how do we get that money that faith that faith coin <laughs> we get that faith by spending time in the word of god all right so if you're our lack i guarantee you that the amount of lack in your life is often a direct correlation to the amount of word and time with god that you are not spending <laughs> right um and if you want to sh lower that gap of lack in your life lower the gap of time that you're spending in god's word spend more time with god okay that's it that's it that's all on that amen amen so um, that is the first scripture that goes with this point. Again, I have no lack because I'm always with the one who has unlimited supply. Okay. So the next scripture I want to share with you guys comes from Numbers 11, verse 21 through 23. Numbers 11, verse 21 through 23. Right. Lack is a mindset. Um, yeah, I'm so glad this is on time for you, Kenyatta. Oh, and Candace, yeah, you just, you got your Amazon package opened up this morning. Yeah, we all got some Amazon on the way. Um, but welcome, welcome. So our uh, scripture number two is under this point is Numbers 11, verse 21 through 23. And um, again, if you if you want to get like the full outline of all of this, feel free to join Big Idea Food BIF 100, which is my membership community. Uh, that is where we will share all of the outlines and the resources that go with these outlines So if you are like, "Ooh, I'm trying to take notes. I want to write all of this stuff I want to have the scripture references just join BIF 100 you will have all of that stuff in there um, uh, delivered to you um, But let's talk about numbers 11 verse 21 through 23 and this is a new living translation and it says But Moses responded to the Lord. There are 600,000 foot soldiers here with me and yet you say, I will give them meat for a whole month? <laughs> e 
even if we butchered all our flocks and herds, would that satisfy them? Even if we caught all the fish in the sea, would that not be enough? Would that be enough? Then the Lord said to Moses, has my arm lost its power? Now you will see whether or not my word comes true. Oof. Y'all. God just, you know what I'm saying? Like, he be having an attitude. God be having a whole attitude with us when we think he can't do big stuff. <laughs> we talked about this earlier. Like, God be like, I can do so many things. And you are out here acting like I can't do so many things. Like, why are you treating me like I am not God out here? <laughs> and so this is what's happening. Moses is out in the wilderness. He got 600,000 soldiers that need to be fed. And God is like, I'm about to feed all of y'all for a month. And Moses is like, we don't even have enough flocks to feed them uh, basically for a day, like let alone a month. What are you talking about? And God was like, has my arm lost its power? Now you about to see if my word comes true. And of course, um, in the rest of the story, God rained down birds and quail, I think, on them for like a whole month. So they had food and everything they needed, right? He just rained it down from the sky in the form of birds. And I just love that as an example that I have no lack because I'm always with the one who has unlimited supply, right? Moses, again, out here in the wilderness with nothing to feed all these people, but he had God. He had the Lord with him. He had Yahweh, our father, the father of our savior, Jesus Christ, who lives in us. Is all just like he was with Moses out there in the wilderness. He is with us too. It's the same. Like we we may not have 600 you may not have 600,000 soldiers that you need to feed but you ha might have some mouths that you need to feed and you might be struggling to feed them mouths <laughs> the mouths and so if he can feed 600,000 foot soldiers in the wilderness he can absolutely feed the mouths that you got to feed right um he can take care of whatever you know thing it is that you lack he got it he got it and it's just a matter of going to him and remembering that he got it, right? Going to him and requesting uh, the provision that you need, just like Moses did. And Mo and I love this scripture, too, because Moses, he was real with God, you know? And, and I don't think he minds that when we're real with him. Like, God, how, though? Like, <laughs> you, saying, you saying one thing, I know you saying you're going to provide, but, like, how? Because it don't look like this doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, how are you going to do this? Um, I don't see how and with the resources that I'm looking at right now it, you where where when how who what and um, God was like okay I'm about to show you right so you know it's okay to go to God with our with your questions and your doubts that's real he know you got them anyway um, and you know you are opening the door for him to, to speak to you and to show you uh, and to prove to you uh, his capacity when we are real with God um, he can use your authenticity with him. He can use your honesty and uh, <laughs> and show you why you need to be believing that he is anything he can do. He can do anything. Um, so, again, we're going to move on from there. But this is just a reminder. Um, even if you're in the middle of the wilderness right now, there is nothing God can't get to you. Um, there is nothing he can't provide to you. And that means that you have no lack i don't know what you think you lack right now but god is with you and he wants you to know that he wants you to remember that he is with you and that means he has everything that you need with him it's just a prayer away literally a conversation away this wasn't even a prayer moses didn't even pray he was just like lord what <laughs> and god was like here we go right it's just a conversation away from god welcome welcome if you're just joining thank you for being here uh, we're talking about god has unlimited power this week and we're talking right now about the truth of the matter being that we have no lack because we are with the one who has unlimited supply and we don't want to allow any perceived lack to stop us from asking for what we require in order to produce and i really want to talk about that piece of it too right um we this my big idea of food is really here to speak to entrepreneurs and creatives. Um, many of you here, drop with whatever your business is in the chat, whatever creative endeavor you're doing, whatever purpose work God has you doing. Let us know what you're working on in the chat. Because I want to know. I want to see what y'all working on. What y'all got going on? Just give us, give us, let me know in the chat. 
But many times in the work that God has called us to do, we come to these impasses where just, <laughs> and I'm speaking to myself right now, okay? We come to these places where we feel like, you know, God, I know what I got to do, but I need this. I ain't got that right now. You know, I am working to produce the materials for Big Idea Food, um, the study journal, to get the study journal into your hands, as well as the other um, books that are coming out. And it's like, ooh, self-publishing, Lord, is expensive, okay? We need to, we need you to bring some resources. And so I need to go, I need to run back this live and listen to it and get to asking and get to get my faith up. <laughs> um, but, you know, many times we will use lack as an excuse not to continue to produce and release the things that he has given us to produce. And so this, me doing these as a live instead of, um, or until I can get this paper into your hands, is a form of me saying, you know what? There is no lack. <laughs> so I'm gonna work with what I have and I'm going to release this stuff um, in whatever way I can. I'm not gonna let there be any excuse, okay? I, it's not on paper yet, but we can get it on these good, in this good social media. And so we, we can't let anything stop us from delivering on whatever God has entrusted us to steward over. Um, whatever your your purpose work, your calling work is, um, if you are experiencing some sort of lack that is delaying you from getting that thing out to the people it's meant to serve, um, I hope that you will hear this live and I hope that you will identify the specific areas that you see lack, that you perceive lack, the specific um, assets that you feel like you're missing, the the supplies that you don't feel like you have, whatever those things are that you're like, if I had this, then I could do what you're asking me to do, God. If I had that, then we could get, at, you know, do it at this level. I encourage you to identify those things. And instead of, uh, instead of sitting in the lack, right? Instead of accepting the lack as truth, which we've already talked about, lack is a lie, okay? Because we're with the one who has unlimited supply, <laughs> bars. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I encourage you to identify what those things are that you are missing and that you need and get to asking, right? Get to asking God for them. What is it that you need? Did you ask God yet? Sometimes we spend so much time in our minds, you know, complaining about the lack and thinking about the thing we lack um, and accepting the thing we lack as if it's there's no other way, there's no other way out or this is the truth that we forget. You know, did you ask God for it yet? Did you even ask? <laughs> hey, God hit me with that uh, earlier this morning, I want to say. There was something I was thinking about. Um, and it was like, oh, wait, I didn't even ask you for this yet. I've just been so in my head and in my feelings about, like, I don't have it, that <laughs> I ain't even asked you for it. Okay, so what's coming to mind for you right now in this moment that you haven't even asked God for? you just been sitting here you know, stewing on the fact that you're missing it, that you lack it, when the truth of the matter is you just ain't asked God for it yet. And I know some of us, we have asked, okay? We still waiting, all right? There's, hopefully the Lord will speak a word to you about those things in this time. But, um, but yeah, identify those things because we don't want to give any excuses for doing the work God called us to do. We don't want to delay any progression in our purpose work, um, because of a lie <laughs> right because of a lie um oof because of a lie man i tell you what the enemy be out here just just keeping us stuck and it's because of stuff that we perceive that ain't even true <laughs> imagine a whole god over here sitting here holding the stuff that you need and all it all it takes is for you to ask so he can reach out and give it to you Y'all, I don't know if y'all are feeling it, but I am. <laughs> this is hitting me right now. Whew. So write down those things. That's the journal prompt that goes with this message today. What are the things that you feel like you made? What are those specific supplies that you feel like you don't have? What is it a website? You need you know, what? You need the money for uh, For me. You need the money to, to, to get somebody to design the interior, <laughs> right? What, what is it that you need? Get specific about those things and write those things down and ask God for them. Just at least ask, at minimum ask, okay? Don't just be out here with your mouth shut. Closed mouths don't get fed. We have not because we ask not, right? 
Don't just be out here sitting in the pool of lag when you don't have to. So the last scripture we want to talk about as we are coming up on an hour when I said we was going to try to do this in 20 minutes, but I'm going to just stop saying that. <laughs> the last scripture we got here is Psalms 36, 7 through 8. Psalm 36, 7 through 8. And that's the new, this is the new King James Version. Amen. Praise God. Yes, because of a lie. Michelle said, I'm not a creative and I need to hear this message. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Michelle. That blessed me to hear. You know, I'm continuing to get clear about who Big Idea Food is for. And God continues to remind me that we all got stuff. He is, whether you're creative or not, you're entrepreneur, got a business or something else. You're, you're working on a vision. You have a dream from God. Um, you have a vision or something that he is giving you to do. Um, this is fuel for that. Um, his word is fuel for that. And we're going to give you the word as much as we possibly can. Um to support you in that work so thank you for sharing that michelle um, i appreciate that so psalm 36 36 verses 7 through 8 says and this is the new king james version how precious is your loving kindness O god therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings they are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures Just, I think I just put this scripture in there just to meditate on. I wish y'all were looking at it. I really hope y'all pull these scriptures up and just put your eyes on them. I'm telling you, your soul is going to eat so good on this good study journal. <laughs> because what? They are abundantly, we are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house. Y'all ever have a friend that you used to go over their house or maybe you were that house and they just had everything you ever wanted. <laughs> Every snack, you felt like going to their, their refrigerator was like a pantry of abundance and joy and all things that you love. That's what I think about when I read this scripture. It's just like, oh my gosh, you, you just got, your house is stocked, okay? What do you need, honey? It's in there. Well, I got it. Throw it in a bag, okay? Like, he has everything. There is nothing that he lacks. We are with the one who has unlimited supply meditate on that we are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house and you give us drink from the river of your pleasures what the river of your pleasures what and how many of y'all know that god is pleased when we are living in that abundance right when we are experiencing the, the abundance that he came to give us that pleases him he, he get you know that's good to him Okay, and he gives us drink from the river of his pleasure, which is our pleasure. Oh, I just, don't you just want to shout? I just want to run around right now. Like, God, you are so good. Oh my gosh. Like, ugh, he is full of resources. <laughs> Whatever those resources are, he's full of them. And he, you can drink. Think about how simple it is sometimes for, for those of us who have the privilege um, how simple it is to just go to your refrigerator and pull out some juice or, you know, pull out some water and just drink. That's how simple it is to go and ask for what you need. That's how simple it is to just go and and receive from him. It's there. It's on the shelf waiting, <laughs> waiting for you to just come grab it, come drink from it. Ooh, that's so good to me, y'all. Please put your eyes on that scripture. Psalm 36, 7 through 8. Just put your eyes on it. Just let your eyes drink from that scripture, okay, when you get a chance later today. Because, oh my gosh, it's so good. Um, we're going to get to the very last scripture, though, y'all, because we are we are at an hour. But, um, again, we're talking about I have no lack because I'm always with the one who has unlimited supply. And this last scripture is a reminder that um, he Jesus is always with us. In Matthew 28, verses tw verse 20 the last part of that scripture Jesus says and lo I am with you always even to the end of the age and you know I don't know about you guys but I always like to I like to think of you know God you said it in your Old Testament but did you say it in the new as well right um, and, and I believe the Old Testament speaks to I'll never leave you or forsake you um, and when the New Testament is referring to it it's referring to it when he when he spoke it in the Old Testament 
Um, but this is a New Testament, <laughs> you know, continuation of that promise, right? I am always with you, even to the end of the age. And who am I? We already talked about who he is, Yahweh. He is the unlimited supply. He is our shepherd. He is Amazon, <laughs> okay? He's bigger than Amazon, whatever we have need of. He is the one that we are with, and he got it. He got it. And so just this is why, again, closing out this point, this is why we can't let any perception of lack stop us. We can't let any lack is a lie. If that's, if that's maybe one of the biggest points I want y'all to leave with is lack is a lie. Leave with leave from this uh, this message today with that as a truth. Okay, lack is a lie because how can we lack if God, the Creator, who can breathe, He breathed all everything that you see, breathe it into existence. How can we lack? How is lack ever a truth if He is with us? Not only with us, but in us. He lives within us. So. Y'all, I just feel like I could just run and shout, okay? Um, I'm going to stop. Um, I think that's that's the end. And so, you know, we're at an hour. Uh, and I do want to, if you guys want to, because I got time. <laughs> I got time on these good Fridays. Um, so if you guys have questions or want to share or chat about anything, definitely drop them into the chat. We can talk. Um, again, if you are just joining, we will share this entire message on the Big Idea Food YouTube channel. So definitely, if you wanted to hear the whole thing, um, I'll have that posted later today, hopefully, if not by Monday, um, and you'll be able to check out the whole message. But definitely, we can talk about anything you guys want to share. Um, hey, Ashley. She said, this is so aligned. God has been impressing on my heart. This, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oof. This idea that God goes before me has been blessing me. Amen. Shout out to God. Won't he confirm it left and right? Won't he surround you with... <laughs> the word that you need from all channels i love how he does that he is so intentional with how he orchestrates our lives i'm so glad that this um is aligned with what god is speaking to you thank you father um just for confirming to um your people through this message and to me in this message the way that you do father you are so good we love you um i love y'all i love y'all thank you so much for being here today um, again, I'll just wait a few more moments if you guys want to talk about anything. Um, you guys can also DM me, hit me up if anything. Um, you know, I'm here. I am here. I am back from <laughs> my uh, hibernation period, whatever I have been in. And so DM me, comment on the video on YouTube. I'm, I'm responsive on those comments as well. Um, talk, talk to me. Let's let's ch chop it up about anything that you guys are experiencing or just want to share. Um, I would love to hear, um, pray with you, whatever it is. So holla at your girl. Um, I don't see any questions or anything, so I think we're good right here at one hour. So I'm gonna end this live. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I will see you next week. Um, thank you, Ashley. I appreciate that. Ugh bless you i'm sending you a hug um i will see you guys next week for week three so if you don't have your book get your book big idea food on amazon the link is in my bios everywhere um until next time mwah. i'll see y'all later